Hello everyone, WanderBots here, and we are about to play Ace Attorney. Well, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, the trilogy. There's now, more than three, but <laughs> these are the first three. They were on the DS originally? Yeah, and I remember playing it on the, uh, oh, what was it? We were taking a very long bus ride between my hometown and your hometown. And you weren't feeling well, so you were asleep. But that's yeah, because I, buses I was make super, you... Yeah, I was super car sick because I can't handle Right, buses. so you just gave me the DS and I was able to play Phoenix Wright for the entire trip. And it was a lot of fun. I think I'd gotten through... Mm, I don't know if I'd gotten through the three games. Maybe the first game, perhaps? Maybe a little bit into the second. But... I remember one of our friends especially loved the series and would cosplay from it and everything, and it's just a blast. I, I, I really like courtroom dramas and things of that nature. And it's almost like akin to crime shows as well, because you're doing a lot of the investigative work, finding clues and whatnot. So, yeah. What do you say? All right. Let's go. Oh, oh all right. Oh, so we can do... Yep, Ace Attorney, Justice for All, and Trials and Tribulations. Now, when did they port this? Just uh, recently? Yeah, like a couple weeks ago. We would have played it on launch, but we were both sick, so I put it off. Oh, I see. Yeah, we got we got the con plague from going to PAX East. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Fourth one is not Phoenix, it's Apollo. And then I, there was like a crossover game with Professor Layton, and I want to say they made more than that, because there's also another game where you played as uh, Edgeworth as well and some other things. Mm-hmm. Let's see, is this completely voice acted? I don't think it's voice acted at all, actually. I think they might... Just some of it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the first turnabout. They really, like, upped the style for this. It looks nice. <gasps> Damn it. Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. <sighs> I gotta find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. August 3rd, 9.47 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number two. Boy, am I nervous. Right! Oh, no, wait. It's not the little girl. Yeah, yes. this is the older sister. This is the older sister. Yeah. I have to remember that. So this is... Yeah, this is... What was it? Mia? Mia. Mia, one of the sisters. I, I get so confused. I thought it was going to be the younger one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. hi, a chief. Oh, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you. And your client as well. Uh, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? Oh, you knew the defendant before this case? Yeah. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. Wait, that's hey, you. I want to help him out any way I can. Get up near <laughs> Mia with your weird phantom dialogue. I just <laughs> really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over. My life, everything is all over. Huh? Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death, despair. Oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to die. Sounds like he wants to die. Uh, yeah. Uh. Nick! Hey, hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I'm afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I, I'm finished. Finished! I can't live in a world without her. I just can't. Ooh. Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me who took my baby away? Huh. Person responsible for your girlfriend's death. 
as that was the girl at the very beginning yep. that was bludgeoned by the the statue. Yep. Also, what was up with the villain having a mole in the middle of his head? Molly, ha molly, mole. Haven't a number of villains in various anime series just had a wart Massive or a mole? moles right there, yeah. Yeah, I, hmm. It is a sign of pure evil! <laughs> the newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy was arrested. Uh, the guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the Butts. <laughs> in the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. By smell, do you mean perspiration? Farts? What was Butts noted for? Everything. His butt smells, his armpit smells, maybe, breath smells. Maybe he also hair has hairspray. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to keep the hair up. Yeah, but like, it's like <laughs> the kind that you spray once and it just stays that way forever. <laughs> and you just kind of like, it, it, the hair can't grow anymore. It's so like stiff. It's just there. Actually, it's just a plastic set piece. There, You see no fibers in there. That, that's just like a, a helmet he's put on. He hasn't taken it off either. That's glued down. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. And that I owe him one. Which is why I took the case, to clear his name. That's just what I'm going to do. August 3rd, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number two. Butts is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, um, defense is ready, Your Honor. Ahem. Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I'm, uh, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious char charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, hands shaking, eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant. In this case, Larry Butts. Larry Butts. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Uh, correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Ooh, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... wait, uh... No, no way. I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix! Are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the victim. Uh, uh, of course, I know the victim's name. I, uh, just forgot temporarily. I think I feel migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press tab to check at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? Cindy. Uh, Cinder block. Cindy Stone. <laughs> Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was bludgeoned to death. Because we witnessed it. She was in struck. The cutscene. Yes. It'd be great if Phoenix Wright was just like prescient and actually see saw the cutscenes too, and he, he's like, "Okay, I know how they died. I know who we did it, but now it's, let's go get some evidence." <laughs> that, I would play that game. It would probably be less fun, but still. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne? Yes, Your Honor? You need to let things rest. Just a little bit. Gotta go fast! No, no, Gotta no. Gotta go so fast! No, 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 because 
if you notice, there are all these stagnant images and stuff. You need to just let it rest before and after you you address the lines. You know. Fast. Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was this statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. A statue. A statue in the shape of the thinker. It's rather heavy. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence adding, added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use tab to check the court record frequently. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stands. Uh, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. <laughs> Uh-oh, Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Ahem. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim has recently dumped you? Had recently dumped you? Uh hey, watch it, buddy! We're great together! We're Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra, and Mark Anthony! Uh, uh. Oh, uh, didn't they all die? <laughs> I wasn't dumb, she just wasn't taking my phone calls. Or seeing me ever. What's that to you, anyway? Mr. Butts, what you generally describe... What you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you, and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? <laughs> lies! All of it lies! I don't believe a word of it! Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport. The victim apparently arrived home from Paris on 7.30, the day before the murder. So that would have been... Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way! The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. He took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! Aw, poor Butts. Now, isn't Butts a model himself? Or what? I have no idea what Butts is. <laughs> I thought that he was He's something. an underwear model. <laughs> Fan cannon. <laughs> we can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Well, right, because... Can I just save whenever? Oh, sweet. I can just save whenever. Awesome. Well, okay. So, what the prosecutor is actually doing by revealing this information that he wasn't aware of is he's trying to bait Butts into having negative emotions and feelings about her when he didn't have any prior to peg him for having malicious intent. Yep. Do you know what I mean? So that's why a defense attorney in this situation would have to tell him, you know, no, you don't answer that because your his perceptions have been changed. Yeah. Great to say his face looks very strange with the soft shading on it and those tiny eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it looks very strange. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I stop him from answering? <laughs> My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Ah, uh. dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheat and cheat dog. I'm gonna die. Oh, I'm just no! gonna drop dead. He's he's gonna run his mouth off. Oh no! Yeah, I'm gonna beat her in the afterlife. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Let's just continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Aww. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. 
You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Uh, well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. Uh, you win. What do I do? Ah, oh, this is interesting. Oh, what? You're saving again? That's the thing about this game. You get caught up, you can actually Yeah, so one of the, the case. one of the reasons why I actually never finished any of the Phoenix Wright games is they get kind of like merciless later on with like some of the harder ones. Well, Maybe it wasn't so bad, but I remember if you like chose the wrong option or or like whatever, you go down like a wrong branch and then have to start the whole like day over or something like that. Yeah. And it, it wasn't very fun. So I'm going to be saving kind of compulsively over the course of this. I mean, I think he should answer honestly in this case. If anything, yeah. it's going to clear him because her murder window could have been at a time that was well before he had left. Yeah. Like, I will, I will also admit, when I played this not for YouTube, I was just using a guide for the whole thing because I just wanted to see how it played out. Not because I cared too much about figuring it out I myself. I played it all on my own. Yeah, she'll played bus. it on her own. <laughs> I think I got way further with that guy. I know. I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I was there. I went. Order. Well, Mr. Butts, dude, chill. She wasn't home, man. So, like, I didn't see her. Oh, no. Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body, just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order! Order in the courts! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Fa Frank Salwit to the stand. Frank saw it. He saw it. Mm -hmm. It's the guy! Of course it is. Mr. Salwit, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is that correct? Oh, yes! Yes! Newspapers, yes! Wait, should I give him more of like a lilting voice? I think I should. Yeah, if he's okay. going to be a creepy salesman. Yeah. Especially, he looks like the happy mask salesman. You're right. Wringing his hands okay. and with his smile and ee. Mr. Sawwitch, you may pr proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Witness, Witness testimony. Accounts. Witnesses account. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I had looked inside the apartment. When I saw her, saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in the apartment wasn't working. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. You, did you hear that there? He said that he was too fearful to go in, and yet he's just admitted that he attempted to use her phone. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Huh. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against testimony like that. Incidentally, why was the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Saw it used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Blackout, mm -hmm. added to the court record. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? All right, Wright, this is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why? You expose the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies, what, he was lying? Your client is innocent, right? then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or, 
Is your client really guilty? No! Oh, how do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. <laughs> Phoenix's arm just extendos across the courtroom and is just like me. I mean, he already does a lot of pointing with I, the I objection. <laughs> also, you have yet to do an objection. You have to. I haven't had the chance. Well, there was the ejection that from was the, the other yeah, game. Which I wasn't ready for. Yep. I, I will do... That is the catchword of this series. Objection! I, I just really like the uh, the imagery of like him pointing out objection and the arm just kind of keeps extending. Just bleh. <laughs> um, okay. Open the court record with tab, then point out contradictions in the testimony. Tutorial. Cross-examination. Okay, so we have the whole thing. So, I wanted okay. to look at this. So, cause of death, time of death, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Right, right, right. But listen, go back. And blackout was an hour later, after death. Right, right, but listen to the... What? I, I'm just going to the, the time thing, because that's the easy in. Right, right. So, it's saying that she died before the blackout, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going all the way to it. It's just further in. Uh, actually, quick question. Text skip. No, no, no. Don't, don't. No, 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 no. Um, what I want is the text to fill, it, fill in instantly. I don't care about transparency. Because that's, that's backspace. Don't skip text. There's no way to actually get it to... Because I don't like it scrolling out like this. Ah, uh, I see. The yeah, text speed? Because I, I can't switch between them. Okay, there we go. Press. Hold it. 1 p.m. Are you certain? Yes! Absolutely! Huh. He seems really confident. 1 p.m.? Right. Doesn't that seem strange to you? Present some evidence to contradict him. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Okay. Attorney badge. Ah. So her time of death was... Objection. Yep. You found the body at 1 p.m. You sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes that the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh... No body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? <laughs> oh, that! Oh, uh... This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sais, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh... Uh, well, I... Gee, that's a really good question! Great job, Wright. Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? Oh, sorry. It was the old man, not the... Man, I think I combined the old man, uh, the the judge and the prosec <laughs> prosecutor. Old man is yeah. The Would old you judge care is to give your testimony again. There we go. I got it. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video or a tape of a taped program. That's why I thought it was one p.m. Terribly sorry about that misunderstanding. A TV program? During a blackout? Huh, I hmm. see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I got this one. Uh, 
Coming from the television. Okay, let's press on this one. Are you sure it was a television, not a radio? Well, no, I guess it might have been a radio. Incidentally, there was no radio on the premises. There was only one large television. Right. I can't put my finger on it, but something about this seems fishy. Something about hearing the television? The witness has testified here at the time. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video tape program. Okay. Okay, so what we want to do is... Victim must have been watching a video... Okay. We might have to just present the thing. A video? Yes, that would explain why the time was wrong. True, true. Right. I think the problem lies someplace else. We're agreed that you heard the time of the scene then. Okay. I mean, okay, you need to stop. So, the thing is... We need to present that he said there was a blackout. Right, so it couldn't have been on the television. Yeah, so the problem is I kind of have to press him until we get that in. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a little arbitrary. Because we already pressed him on that one. Could be on this. I'm just going to keep saving. Because the thing is, like... We more or less have to press him until we can just present the, uh... Mm -hmm. Unless... I could just try presenting the blackout report. Like, right now. Because she said it was fishy here. Or we right. can keep, Let's keep pressing him. Because I'm, I'm just going to have to press him a bunch. You said heard, not saw? Yes, I heard. All I saw was the body lying there. I didn't think to look at anything else. Least of all, my watch. Huh. Isn't that a little strange? So you're saying you heard something. But you were so shocked by the body, you wouldn't hear anything at all. What? The witness did say he actually heard the time. It's ludicrous to su suggest he wouldn't hear anything. Huh. I have to agree with the prosecution. Witness, continue your testimony. So, yeah, the other thing is I can press indefinitely, so the more I press, the better. So I'm just going to kind of keep pressing these statements until we find Well, can you look at the court file? Sure. Look at the evidence. I mean, it's it's this one. Uh, from noon oh. to 6 p.m., day of the crime. Therefore, it wouldn't have stopped at 1. Correct. So therefore, you go to the one that says, three hours off, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, which is why I was going to press him there. Ow. Yeah, just let me press everything. Because presenting evidence ticks off the little health bar on the top right. Right, right. But pressing never does. Mm-hmm. How do you uh, how do you explain the gap? Well, witness, can you explain this? Oh, I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. So I thought it was 1 p.m. I guess I'm just gonna. Well, that was the only thing saying 1 p.m. Yeah. Are you sure the voice you heard said it was 1 p.m.? Yes, I can practically hear it now. It was quite clear. Mr. Payne has the prosecution... Oh, Mr. Payne has the prosecution verified this testimony. My apologies, Your Honor. I, too, have only just learned that the witness heard the time. Oh, I'm really sorry. I only just remembered it now. Oh. I'm really sorry about the misunderstanding. Okay. Well... I'm just going to present the blackout report right now. Mm -hmm. We've got enough tries that it won't matter, but I'm going to just try it. But it has to be on the time. Maybe? Hold it right there. The prosecution has said that there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. Ah! You couldn't have heard a television. Or a video. Mm -hmm. ah! I... Well... Ah! Did you go through... Did you click too quickly so that you didn't see his crazy expression? Oh, you know, I gotta wait for those. Don't You worry. need to wait no, for them. No, his, his, his insane expression doesn't show yet. That but, well, but it there was a semi-crazy one. I, I, I will one. wait a little bit more. You're right. Mm -hmm. The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Side? No, I uh, find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Uh, ah! Wait, I remember it now. 
Mr. Sawit? The courts would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant directions are harming your credibility. That and you seem rather... Oh, that and you seem rather distraught. Ah! I think his hair is fake. <laughs> is it like a toupee? I think so. It like flips off his head whenever he goes back. I could be wrong. My apologies, Your Honor. It, uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Oh, I know why. The, uh, the thinker has a clock in it or something. Right, right. I think it had an electronic voice inside it. Yeah, so when it when he hit her, it said 1, 1 p.m. or something like that. Very well, Mr. Sawit. I had totally forgotten that detail, but I was like, that's the only thing. And now I, I remember it and I feel... I shouldn't speak mm -hmm. about predictions because I already know the answer, kind of, sort of. The wig, I don't know. I don't know. I played this game, what, seven years ago? Eight years ago? So it's kind of hard to remember anything. Anyway, let's hear your testimony one more time, please. Hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. I'm just going to press him on a lot of these. That strikes me as a very suspicious mistake. Yes, I can see how you'd be a little doubtful. I'm really sorry. I only just remembered that table clock. Table clock? There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? A table clock? Was there a clock at the scene? This is the first I've heard of it. Yeah, the murder weapon! The killer used it to hit the victim! That must have been what I saw! The murder weapon. Yes, the table clock that was used as a weapon. Okay, sorry. So, do you just want to present the clock as evidence? Something's fishy here. Why didn't you tell us that in the first place? I guess it just slipped my mind. I'm not really sure how it happened myself. The witness says he saw the table clock. End of story. Now, find the contradiction. Yeah. Probably right there. Mm hmm. Statue in the shape of the thinker. It's rather heavy. Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock, it was the statue. Now, how's this supposed to be a clock? Whoa! You, with your objections and your evidence, just. Who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sot. Hey, I... I saw it there, okay? That's a clock! Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne? As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You tilt it and says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I had submitted it as a statue. My apologies. Wait a minute. If it only says the time if the if the head of it is then twisted. Then he could have seen it. Yep. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with the testimony now? Yes. Yes. Yes, Your Honor. There's a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Pro contradiction. Huh. Indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... Well, yeah, went he went into, into the, the apartment. apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh, yeah? Prove it! Prove I went in there! I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. Cute! Oh, wait, no, sorry. You struck her with a clock and... The shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. It was the sound you heard. 
Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Rice. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Saw it. The sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Objection. What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. <laughs> what the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with a clock? Hi! Hi! That day, I, I never! Look, I, the clock, I heard now, I mean, I uh, saw... Uh, uh, <laughs> Shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you! It was him, I tell you! I saw him! He, he killed her, and he should burn! Burn, give him death! Order. Order in the court, I say. Your Honor, uh, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright, Your Honor? You claim the sound of the uh, the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think it through carefully. Your Your Honor, the sound Mr. Saw it heard was definitely this clock. The fact that it is clear if you simply... Try sounding the clock. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. Beep. I think it's 825. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's uh, 11... Oh, no. It's 1125. Ah! As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Saw it heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Saw it! No. Oh, sorry. So, Mr. So Mr. Saw it. Sorry, whenever it switches, I just. Yeah, brain. Anyway, so, Mr. Saw it. Try and talk your way out of this one. Uh, ah, 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 you forgot one thing! Uh oh. What's he talking about now? Well, it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow. It proves nothing! How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case! Huh. He's right. How am I gonna prove that? Damn it. I was so close. Mr. Wright? It seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Huh. Yes, Your Honor. Which means I cannot let you indict the wit witness. Unfortunately... It ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank saw it. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens! You treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime! Ugh. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Really? Wait, what did we... What? Huh? Oh, Mia's gonna step in. Not so fast, Mr. Saw it. Mia, I mean Chief. Listen up, Wright. Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But Chief, it's over. I, I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean that you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right, right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? <gasps> yes, Paris. she was in Paris. That's what I was thinking. Wait, maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it right. Find it, and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, 
You say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There's a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! Huh! Tough words! Let's see you pull this one off! Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. The passport. Take that. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't 3 hours slow. It was 9 hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in the apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Saw It? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? <laughs> <laughs> you just froze at the mouth, okay. Order, order, I say. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? He, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, your honor. Very well. Oh, Mr. Wright. Yes, your honor? I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly by the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, such is the nature of this game. It always seems like the <laughs> person much. who's prosecuting you is actually the the murderer. At this point, there's only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. Not guilty! Shame. I was hoping we'd have a double guilty sentence here. Maybe they're in cahoots? No? Shame. I like the idea of burning. And with that, this court is adjourned. <laughs> we burn the defense lawyer at least. Hair looks burnable. It turns out that Frank saw it was a common burglar. He poses a newspaper salesman to check and see when people are out of the house. That day. Oh, he returned home. Well, well what happened was... She wasn't supposed to be back from her trip, or what was the deal? Because he had been scouting out places to well, pilfer, right? When or when, he had left the door open. Yeah, oh, so he no. went in to rob, not realizing that she was in there, and so when she witnessed him, he killed her. When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sod himself uh Mr. Sod let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sod grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Whew, I still can't believe we won. Right! A good job in there. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. <laughs> not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over! Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, Nick! Don't worry about me, I'll be dead gone soon! Uh... Good, wait, no, what? I mean, bad, bad, bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. Uh, but, but my city when he's gone, man, gone forever. Larry, she was a, nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. Uh, Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts. Innocent. <laughs> uh, Wait, thanks. Harry I Butts? Really... I just got what it is. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's why his name is Larry, just so they could make that dumb gag. I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner, movie, my treat. Oh no, I, I couldn't. I am I am a boobs woman. Not a... <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Well, she's certainly not an ass woman. <laughs> Otherwise, she'd be going right for Harry Butts. <laughs> hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. 
Oh, hey! Here, take this. It's a present. Wait, you really want the murder weapon as a gift? A present? For me? Wait. Wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Oh, so it's his version of it. R really? You? You made this. Hmm. Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you, uh, believe it? I was so into that chick. And, and she was just playing me for a fool. Doesn't that just make you want to cry? <laughs> Larry. Hmm. Are you so sure? Excuse me. I think she thought quite a lot about you, in her own way. Nah, you're not gonna sympathize with me, it's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him. Huh? Oh yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? I mean, she took the clock with her to Paris. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, what else are we going to give her with the blackout record? Mm-mm. Take that. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive. You weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What about that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever. She probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Ah. Uh, well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little bit better. Right? right? Oh. I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen, learn, grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall I be off? Yeah, I guess so. Hey, how about dinner? On me. We'll drink a toast to the innocent butts. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him? Uh, yeah, part at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the butt and said, gee, Nick, <laughs> it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us, unless you count the clock he gave Mia. Uh, didn't know, that, didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I would never be able to keep. The end. All right, well... Thanks for joining us on this uh, series. We'll see. <laughs> ah, episode two has been added.